In this video, we're going to cover Nintendo DS emulation on the Xbox Series X and S version of RetroArch. Alright everybody, time to get the Nintendo DS setup guide up to date with the current setup methods of RetroArch. Nothing much has really changed with this emulator since the last video, but just different file locations and things like that. Want to make sure that everything is just uniform between all the setup guides. So this setup guide is assuming that you followed one of my new setup guides available on the channel. If you haven't, you can look at the RetroArch playlist in the description below and get set up with one of those. But let's go ahead and dive in. So once again for this setup guide, we're going to be using the Melon DS core just because it's more up to date than Desmoomi 2015. And regular Desmoomi still has some save issues, at least in my testing, on the current builds of RetroArch. So just you can't save your game, so it's kind of pointless. But Melon DS does require you to have a Nintendo DS BIOS file. So there's three required files. There's the ARM7, ARM9, BIOS files, and then your firmware file. Now I do have a guide on the channel showing you how to dump these files. So if you happen to still have your DS, you can get them from there. Melon DS also supports emulation of DSi systems now. So if you have a DSi, you can actually dump additional firmware files from that and use them within... Melon DS, which is pretty cool. I don't have a DSi, so I haven't been able to test it personally, but the option's there. But once you have your BIOS and firmware files placed, we just need to add them to our RetroArch system folder. So if you have moved your system folder onto USB, you can just plug your USB drive into your computer, open up your created system folder, and then just drag them right on in. If you are using FTP, go ahead and launch into Durango FTP. Start your FTP server. And then from your computer or phone or whatever you're using to FTP into your Xbox, access that file share. Open your local folder, find your RetroArch folder, local state, system folder, and drag them right on inside. And with those BIOS and firmware files in place, we're ready to move on to game setup. Now, Nintendo DS games only come in one real file format, and that is .nds. But if you wish, you can also have them compressed into zip format. So if you have 7-zip on your computer, there's actually a really awesome zip bat out there that you can just drag into your ROMs folder and just automatically zip everything. It's pretty convenient. I'll put a link in my description below to this bat file, but you do need to have 7-zip installed for it to work. And once the program is finished running, it will have zipped everything up and automatically deleted the originals from the folder. So that way you just have a nice, clean games folder with a smaller size. You don't have to do this, this is optional, it's just if you want to save some space on your storage device. But once it's finished, you can delete the zip.bat file, and we just need to put our games onto our preferred storage medium. So I am again using USB, so I'm just going to go back into my USB drive here, go into my games folder, and drag my Nintendo DS games right on in. And done. Now, if you're storing your games on your internal SSD, if you're on dev mode and using S drive, you can go back into your FTP share, navigate to your S drive, program files, Windows apps, find your RetroArch folder with the X64 at the end, your made games folder, and then just drag them right on in and let it do its thing. But once that transfer is completed, we're ready to begin playing some DS games. Alright, so after getting your USB drive plugged back into your Xbox if you're using one, and getting loaded into RetroArch, we're ready to begin loading up Nintendo DS games. So one method of doing so, go to load content. If you are in dev mode using USB, your games will be located under E. If you're in retail mode using USB, they'll typically be under D. And then if you put them on that internal drive, they'll be under the S, Program Files, Windows Apps, RetroArch Folder Directory. But navigate to where your games are stored. Find your DS game folder, choose a game, tell it to load the archive, choose a core, tell it to run. Now I don't personally prefer this method, it's a little long-winded, so what I like to do instead is make a games playlist. So head down to import content, and from here head over to manual scan. Now we're going to choose a content directory where our DS games are stored, so navigate to the drive you have those in. Find your DS games folder and tell it to scan this directory. Now system name. Press right on your D-pad to go down to Nintendo, and find Nintendo DS. Now for default core, press right on your D-pad again to go down to Nintendo, find Nintendo DS, Melon DS. Make sure scan recursively is on if you have your game separated into subfolders. 
And next, make sure Scan Inside Archives is turned on if you have your games compressed in zip format, otherwise you will get an error saying there is no valid content found. And once these options are set, you can go ahead and start the scan. And you'll have a nice new Nintendo DS playlist entry here on the left, with all of our wonderful games. Now to play a game, all we need to do is choose one and tell it to run. And as long as you have those BIOS and firmware files placed correctly, you should be greeted with a wonderful Nintendo DS game. Now, I specifically chose Castlevania Dawn of Sorrow here for a very specific reason. When I tell it to start up a game and make a new game, it wants me to sign my name, but by default, the touchscreen is not enabled in Melon DS for some reason. You'd think that it would be. But to remedy this, just go into your RetroArt Quick Menu using your uh, provided hotkey you did during initial setup. Scroll down to Options, and you will see a Touch Mode option here in the middle. And we just need to turn this on to Joystick. And now when we go back into the game, we could use our right analog stick to control the touchscreen. And then you click down on the stick to activate it. It's a little unintuitive. Kind of makes playing touchscreen based games a bit difficult, but you can do it. I give up. But now we can begin playing Castlevania Dawn of Sorrow. Also very useful for Pokemon Diamond and Pearl, as you are required to touch that Pokeball at the beginning of the game. But with the basics of DS gameplay out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about some of the advanced core options available to us within Melon DS. Going back into our RetroArt Quick Menu, head down to Options. Our first option is to choose our console mode, so it's defaulted to DS, but if you have those DSi firmware and BIOS files, you could switch it over to a DSi mode. Next, we have boot game directly, so when you choose a game to launch, it will boot directly into the game with this option turned on. If you want to boot into the DS menu, you can turn it off, that way you get the DS boot animation every time you start up a game. Next up, screen layout. There's a number available here, so there's top bottom, which is your standard DS layout, or you can switch it to bottom top, or you can have the screen side by side, you can have the top screen only, bottom screen only, or you could have a hybrid screen, which makes one of the screens bigger and the other smaller. Unfortunately, in this new update of Melon DS, it kind of has a double setting here, which I'm not a big fan of. But you'll see that there's a hybrid small screen mode underneath the screen gap option, and you'll have to manually set this depending on what you're doing, which is really annoying because this wasn't the case before. But it is now, so unfortunately you will need to set that depending on what hybrid screen method you are using. That way it's not just duplicating the same screen. But the hybrid method is my preferred depending on the game. Most games utilize the bottom screen or the top screen as like a map or inventory, so having them the same size isn't always necessary. But there are games that have cutscenes that are shared between the screens, like Metroid Prime Hunters, that's cool to see. But here's all your screen options to choose from. Next up is the screen gap. If you want to put a screen gap between your top bottom modes, you can choose that here. Hybrid small screen mode, we kind of talked about this just a second ago. Swap screen mode, so this is actually a pretty cool feature. So if you press the right trigger on your controller, it will actually swap your screen between bottom and top. So say you're using just top or bottom screen only mode, you can press the right trigger to instantly swap between the screens so you can see what the map is doing or different things like that while getting the biggest possible screen real estate. But you could choose between if that's on a toggle or if you need to hold down the trigger to swap modes, or to swap screens rather. Next up, randomized MAC address, you could skip over this one. Threaded software renderer, you could turn this one on to get better performance on your Xbox Series X and S. DS emulation can be pretty demanding on CPU requirements, so threaded helps alleviate that somewhat. Next up, touch mode, we already talked about this one. And we're going to skip over all these OpenGL options. This doesn't work on Xbox Series X and S consoles at this time, so it doesn't really do anything. We're also going to skip over all the JIT stuff here. It's best to leave all of these as they are in their default state. Next up, enable DSi SD card. If you have those DSi BIOS and firmware files, you can enable this option if you choose. Audio bitrate, you can choose between 10 and 16 bit here. It's set to automatic by default, but if you want the best, you can just turn it up to 16 bit. And then you could also set audio interpolation to change up the way your DS emulated audio sounds. So this is going to be a personal preference here on if you like the 
filtered sound or not. So choose them, see how it sounds, and uh, choose accordingly. But that's going to do it as far as core options are concerned. If you have certain options you want set for any specific game over others, you can go up to Manage Core Options and save them as a Game Options file. Now one last thing I want to show real quick is how to apply a Nintendo DS screen shader onto your emulated DS game. So heading down into the Shaders tab, you can turn them on if they aren't already. And go into your Load button here and go into Shader Slang. And then from here there is a nice handheld folder. So these first two DS options are actually to make a hybrid screen effect, like what is found in the core options. So if you're using hybrid mode already, don't use these two. But if you scroll down just a little bit more here, you'll find the LCD grid shader options. And these include Nintendo DS options like NDS Color Plus Motion Blur or NDS Color. So these will apply an LCD grid line and apply Nintendo DS uh, kind of desaturated colors. And if you add in the motion blur one, it will try to simulate the LCD screen's motion blur. So this is one of my favorites for absolute um, authenticity. So as you can see, it just looks really nice in motion. Well, I mean, nice if you like the original screen motion blur, that is. But you can see that the grid lines are looking pretty nice. And just overall a nice effect. Some glitching around the edge of the screen, but I can live with that personally. And again, if you don't want that motion blur, you could just apply the other grid line pattern here. That way you get the nice grid lines without as much blurring. Or if you don't want to have the grid lines at all, there is just a standard NDS color shader here that you can apply just to get the Nintendo DS's uh, color palette placed upon your emulated uh, image. Now, as always, shaders are going to be personal preference, so choose the one that you like the most, apply it, and run with it. And once you have the shader set the way you want it, you can go into the Save menu within the Shader tab here. And you can save them as a core preset or a game preset. So if you want to have all of your DS games have the same shader, use the core preset like this. Otherwise, go down to Game Preset. But that's going to do it for Nintendo DS emulation on Xbox Series X and S. Not as much in this core as some others, so it's nice and easy to get your DS games up and running on your Xbox consoles. Now, do remember that DS emulation is very CPU demanding, so if you're on an Xbox One system, you likely aren't going to get playable performance in most things. But, big thank you to each and every one of you for watching today's video. If you could all do me a couple of huge favors here at the end, if you haven't already, be sure to hit that like or dislike button, just depending on how much you like today's tutorial. And if you haven't done so already, hit that sub button notification bell so you can see when new content goes live on the channel. I have lots of stuff coming your way, and I'd love to have you along for the ride. If you'd like to further help support the channel and keep it running, you can also check out that join button here on YouTube or the Patreon link in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen. Little goes a long way to keeping us going and bringing you content just like this. Big thank you to all of our current champions. Y'all are amazing. Thank you so much for being here and doing what you do. But until next time, my wonderful internet peeps, you all stay awesome, keep on gaming, and we'll see you back next video.